in this? Okay. Hi. Hi, Kim. <laughs> hey, Kim. Hi. 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 So, you guys, Kim D and I had a conversation. We did have a little bit of a back and forth exchange initially. Um, but Chantal and I made it clear we never had any issues with Kim D at all. We um, actually were so excited and we said that we think she should get her own podcast. And we have a lot to cover. Yep. And we have a lot to cover today. So we had, um, Kim and I got together. We had a lovely conversation and Mm. Kim said, you know, me and Kim agreed and said, let's get you on our podcast. There's so much to talk about. Our listeners are so excited to hear from you. But I'm excited to tell them, I'm I'm excited to tell them the whole story and about the the new podcast. So, Mm. you know, I'm here for you girls. Good. But well, I mean, Kim, before we get into your new podcast, we obviously need to address the elephant in the room. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you were doing a show. You're no longer doing the show. Correct. What happened? Okay. Well, um, so there was one thing that was a little wrong on, on the thing that I shared that you girls put up. You said that I didn't get paid anything. Well, I kind of didn't, but he paid my cleaning lady. I got paid money each week to pay my cleaning lady. I don't know. Okay. So (laughs) let me, let me go backwards. When we first started, I was David's friend. So I didn't, I didn't ask him for a dime. Didn't ask him. I did it for free. When I'm your friend, I'm good. Okay. So as the months went on, um, you need to watch this. You need to watch that. You need, I'm a, whoa, wait a minute. Like I'm going to watch a lot of work. An hour here, an hour there. I can't go out. I have to be ready at 8.30 Saturday mornings. I I was in my pajamas. I'm like exhausted. So now I'm like, you know, do you think that you can pay for my cleaning lady? That's how it happened. And that's where it stayed. That's where it stayed. So I'm not here to bash him in any way. It's my fault. That's what I accepted. That's what I asked for. I had no idea that the universe and all these people thought I was getting half the money, nowhere near it. And I had no idea what was coming into Patreon. I didn't know. I don't know much about this stuff. I'm not tech savvy. I had a couple of my friends say, "Um, something's wrong with this picture. And they really were upset. And I'm like, well, you know, I don't know what to do. And I really honestly was just like, what's the big deal? So I'll do it until... There was a couple of things that were done and said that I'm not going to get into right now that I felt were disrespectful. And I got a little upset and I said, you know what? It's not worth it for me. I'm just not going to do it anymore. And then all these freaking people were like, you need to do your own podcast. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do my own podcast. And that's how it happened. It was not set up before I left first. And then the offer was on the table to do it. Do you know what I mean? Like it wasn't a premeditated, like, oh, I'm going to walk away for something bigger. No, it it was never about that. It started as a friendship. No, it's really smart that you are because we even got messages. Like I got like six messages saying, I can't, like, I can't, I only was listening to that podcast because of Kim D. So like, it really is people, I'm not saying everyone, I'm sure he has like loyal fans. He's been doing it for a while, but a lot of people were saying that they listened because of you. Yeah, like even in the comments, if you go look at the comments, everyone's like, wow. we got multiple messages yeah. of people saying that. So um, I was a little bit surprised, but it sounds like you didn't realize like yeah. how much you can make on Patreon or something. And No uh, idea. Um, and I'm not <laughs> sure how much, but I heard that it's the Patreon you guys did was pretty expensive. So it's mm-hmm. not like your typical. So. I completely understand why you would feel like, okay, I'm doing this every week and people are mainly here for me. So I can understand why that was. You had some live events though scheduled. Are you doing those live events? No. The live event, um, when I wrote this text to him, I said, um, I just don't want, I just like don't want to do it anymore. You know what I mean? Like, I just don't want to do it. Okay. So then I said, you know, I really don't want to do the live because I want to distance myself at this point. They, the answer I got, well, well, I'll do it by myself. I'm like, oh, okay. And then a couple of days later, people were contacting me and saying, are you going to do the live? I'm like, I'm not. And then the next thing I heard was, 
the place canceled it and they got their money back. So do you have any more shows? Like, cause I know that it's being teased that you're going to come back or you're going to be, you're still going to do shows with, with okay, your. Well, I, I taped a few. I taped okay. a few um, months ago and I'm sure they'll air. Um, it was interviews, um, but I have not done any work with him okay. for two to three weeks now. And I, wow. I'm not going to, I'm on my own now. I'm, I don't want any hard feelings. I don't want, I'm not going to go and start talking smack, but I want, yeah. I asked you girls, I want to get the truth out. And I'm the right. one who called the, I'm the one who called the emergency podcast <laughs> because I'm like audience. So when I spoke with you, I'm like, why don't we just do this? Because we are both involved. You know what mm -hmm, I'm yeah. saying? We're all three of us are involved. So right. I said, I'd like to clear the air. Um, I want to tell everyone that I had no idea what these beautiful ladies even looked like. I had <laughs> no grudge against them. I was being told, oh, they're talking trash. They're talk and I'm like, what are you, why? Like, I had no idea. Okay, I know that sounds like, I, you know, there's a couple tools missing from the shed, but I am home with my dogs. I'm doing this. I'm doing, I don't pay a lot of attention to this. And maybe yeah. that's how this all happened to me. Maybe I sh I'm going to be paying more attention to it now, but um, I have no problem with you girls. I never did. I've right. heard about yeah. you for years. I know you've been around <laughs> for years, but I, I never like thought you were talking about me or anything like that. So I just yeah. wanted to say that also. Yes. I'm oh, we so appreciate glad. That. And I'm so glad we cleared the air because as soon as I had a conversation with you, I was like, wow, Kim really doesn't know what goes on with like social media. Like she really doesn't right. know what's happening. And I, it was yeah. so apparent to me. So okay. I'm glad that we have a conversation. We're so grateful. We're so thankful that you came Good. here. Um, and, uh, you know, we wish, we wish, you know, that show all the best, all the, yeah. you. Success, you know, um, let them, uh, everyone keep listening to that show, whatever, but yes, yes. News, Yes. Exciting, exciting news. You have gotten your own podcast. Talk to us about it. Absolutely. So get real with Kim D. Um, I had a couple of people that I was talking to, like, they were like, you got to keep real in it. And, um, you know, so I don't know. I just wanted to make it short and sweet. You know, I tell the truth. I, I feel that yeah. my biggest thing is I tell the truth. The only difference is, you know, I'm a little hard on people. I am. And I admit that. Um, so I'm going to try to be a bit softer, not, not too soft. I'm not changing. I can't change my personality. I am who I am, but I'm going to yeah. just try to be a little softer. The one thing also that I want to do that I think is very important is I want to interview one fan a month, even if they come on the show oh, and they're God. like, yeah, I like, you know, they could Skype in like we're doing, even if they come in like, I hate you. Who yeah. do you think you <laughs> are? You talk shit about everyone. I want, I want you to say, I want them to say whatever they want, you know, but cause I want to hear from them and you know, not too many people do that. So, but it's going to be about fashion. It's going to be about makeup. It's going to be about, um, my life. I'm writing a book, my life with the big boys. It's going to take you through oh. that. And then of course, all things housewives, you know? Yeah. So yeah, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be a lot about me. Like in the beginning, it's going to be a little bit sure. about me and how I got to where I am now. And then we'll get into all of my gossip and what I feel about people. A lot of my gossip is my own opinion. Like mm -hmm. yeah. I talk to a lot of the girls, they tell me stuff. I don't say where my source is, but I give my opinion on what I watch on TV, what I see and what I feel about people's characters. Again, it's my opinion. People may not agree with me, you know, so that's where it's going to, that's where it's going to be. That's so exciting. So where can people listen to your podcast? Okay. Right now I'm only on Patreon. Remember I'm a novice at this. I reached out to a friend of mine who owns a, a studio. So I'll be out of my pajamas. Like I put in my video, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to do an outfit of the day. When I go okay. into the studio, get my hair and makeup done. I might like change things up because I want that to be a part of Patreon and my Instagram um, you know, they could, that's all it's going to be right now is Patreon. And uh, I made my price $10 and hopefully people can afford that. You know, I want to like make it crazy. And then as I branch out, I'm sure down the road, it'll be on different avenues. But right now that's the only place I'm going to start slow. 
Okay. I like so that. Get Real with Kim D is on Patreon right now. We will yes. link it after this interview. Thank you. Mm-hmm. We'll put it out. So all of you guys join the Patreon, support Kim D. I know you guys love Thank her so you. much. It's going to be yeah. funny hearing if you get a fan on and they really do tell you like how they feel about you or something. I'm going to watch that. Yeah. Listen to yeah. me. Listen, you should see most of my DMs. Remember, most of them are kind. Yeah. But right. the funny ones, the, when right. they come at me, um, this is what I write. Excuse me? Like, <laughs> right. You know, but then right. I'll go back and forth with them. And sometimes I win them over and sometimes yeah. I don't. But, you know. The real part about it is that I don't hold it. Like, I'm not gonna, I'm not embarrassed. So yeah, if they're right. going to say something mean, they have the right to feel that way. You know, so yeah. I don't mind. I don't mind people hearing that so, because so if I, I honestly want to hear it too. So if I say, because like, I think I have said it, like Kim D loves the drama. Like, what would you say back to someone like that? I do. <laughs> okay. I do. I love doing the show. When I was on the show, we had fun. We went to all different restaurants. I was like the concierge. I would call the restaurant before and say, listen, we're coming in. You're picking up the check. Uh, bah, bah, bah. We'd have drinks. Like we just had a great time. Now, when right. the drama started, I wasn't afraid of it. I never flinched. Yeah. When you know, I did, I walked away from it. Like I would do it and then I'd walk away from it. Like it didn't affect me. You know, that's just who I've been since I was a young girl. Like, I don't let people upset me or get to me. Yeah, I'm going to fight with you. Then when the scene is done, I'm like, let's have a drink and have fun. Yeah, let's just dance right. and have a Like, some people really get upset. And right. it really affects their life. It did not affect me. I'm grateful for every single thing this show brought me, including my uh, best supporting agitator award that's right next to me that you can't even lift. It's so heavy because I loved it. I would come back in a minute, in a minute. If they asked me back, I'm like, yes. That, yeah. That's so funny yeah. because like Siggy has talked highly about you. Um, and she's like the one that it, it's so affected she's so adorable. much. Like, she, yeah, she couldn't handle like what you I know. Could handle. Yeah. No. Well, so well I used to be on the phone with her. Yeah. She's, some yeah. people are just not made for it. Yeah. And speaking of Siggy, so what's interesting is that she told us when you're a friend of the Real Housewives, you don't get paid. But did you get paid? I got paid. I got paid. Okay. Oh. I got paid. As a matter of fact, my first big contract was after I called Joe a midget. When I said, like, excuse me, who do you think you're talking to, you little midget? You know, I played with the big boys. That next year is when I got my biggest contract. I was paid. I was paid for reunions. I was paid for um, that year. Um, and then I was paid as I went along. But you girls have to remember something. When they say I wasn't paid, I owned Posh. It was a tiny little store. I was with my boyfriend of 13 years at the time. I didn't need the money. And I honestly, I knew, do need it now. Let's, let's get that straight. I could use it now. But at the time, it wasn't about the money. It's like, oh, my God, my, my store that I just opened is going to be on international TV. Who wouldn't right. do it? Yeah, of course. Who wouldn't do yeah. it? They were filming at my store. They were filming my fashion show. So I didn't care. And another thing, I didn't want to. Not that if they offered me, I probably would have taken it. But why would I want a contract? And I had an answer to that. Yeah, you understand? Right. It was so yeah. much easier. I showed up when I wanted to and I didn't. So things changed. My my boyfriend passed away. Aww. And that, yeah, it was very, it was horrible. And then that year is the year of San Cubana. Then my boyfriend passes away, and then I get the contract. My boyfriend passed away on a Sunday. I was filming at Capital with Teresa Judice Tuesday night. Tuesday wow. night. I didn't know that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So you know, it's been it's been a rough ride, but right. you know, it's uh, you get through it. Well, speaking of Teresa, you and Teresa recently started following each other. Tell us mm -hmm. how that came about. Well. One day, I didn't know. Again, I don't look at my followers, okay? Yeah. So one day, I get a text from someone, and they're like, um, you got a new follower. I'm like, really, who? And this person knows Teresa. And I'm like, then he's that, that person. I don't want to say your say mm -hmm. Says, Teresa. I'm like, why? Not in a bad way. I'm like, why? One of the things that he said or she said was she had been seeing some old clips one with Melania yeah. and, and I guess, 
and also Siggy's been in her head. Jacqueline's been in her head. Dee's been in her head. So yeah. what we were close. We were really good friends. I loved her. And I spent a lot of time with her. We used to have so much fun. And I loved the kids. And, you know, not too many people can hurt me because I'm a little tough. But I was hurt. Mm. Um, it's years later. I'm over it. I'm hoping she's over it because we went head to head, which I thought were good scenes. I thought yeah. they were great. it was great TV, <laughs> but yes. um, you know, I would, I'm happy to see her happy, you know, yeah. and we recently reached out to each other because I went mm. to Columbia pizza, Columbia Inn, and I wanted to see what the whole stuff was about with the pizza and the pizza was pretty delicious. And as <laughs> I got up from the table, my phone rang. I didn't know. So I go home. And I'm, this was just this weekend, Sunday. I go home and I'm looking through my phone. I'm like, Teresa, Teresa called me. I'm like, wow, this is really going too far. So I text her. I said, T, did you call me? She goes, no. Then she writes, oh my God, did you call me? I'm like, no. Oh, so someone, someone you guys? Wow. wow. Thank God you didn't I, answer then. <laughs> it's wild. So I go, well, I'm glad to see you're doing great. I'm, I'm hoping you're happy. And then I wrote, I'm here watching Lincoln Lawyer with my dogs in my rocking chair. And I got to have these a-holes bothering me. It's because I'm here making sauce for my family. And then we just kind of broke the ice. So that's where we stand right now. You know what I mean? We didn't okay. pick up the phone and call. But it was she was very receptive. And we both were like, we both were laughing. Like, laugh out loud with a heart. Like, oh, my God. They spoofed both of us. They did us a favor. They yeah, right. so the the ice is broken now. So if Bravo asks you to come back and film with Teresa, are you going to do it? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, of, of course, I want to be paid. Absolutely, <laughs> will not do it. Yes. I don't have anything to promote except for my podcast. Yeah. Like it's different. I'm not in a store. I gave up my store during COVID. Um, I have a website, poshbykimd.com. But I, there's no reason for me to do it unless. I'm making money now. I loved it. I love doing it, but yeah. I'm not promoting. I'm promoting myself and being, I would love to, I don't mind bringing drama. Um, I pretty much know all the girls. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I would do it in a second. I would do it in a second. Well, I think a lot of people want to see you back. So that is going to make people very excited. So we I'm excited. asked, Good. We asked our listeners to ask you some questions and we got some really good ones, some throwback ones. It's going to open the door. Ooh. You <laughs> said we could ask you whatever, Kim D. Okay. Okay. They're not anything bad or anything, but for example, no, we I don't got... care if they're bad. I just told you, I don't care if they come on and say, F you, yeah. I, you know, whatever. <laughs> That's all good. We respect that. So we had a listener uh, and they asked, we got, you, you know, um, and it wasn't just one listener. We actually got majority of our listeners asking about stripper gate. So what is the real story about stripper gate? Like who really set it up? Because I was kind of involved in that, um, in the sense that I started a Twitter account and I could not stand how Melissa and Joe treated their family. We're middle Eastern. We're very similar to Italians. I'm like, this is disgusting. Mm -hmm. And excuse me, one day I get a call from Johnny or Johnny and Penny and they okay. tell me, that, yes, they tell me that they actually um, know the person who was the manager of Melissa at the stripper at the stripper place, and his name is Angelo. And they say, you know, we're gonna. Um, do you want to interview him? And I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't have a website, and that is how I opened up my website by interviewing Angelo. So that game. is my first <laughs> post ever, and so. But it was like Penny and John who reached out to me. Like, you didn't reach out to me. No. But it was Penny and John. No. So, like, what's the story between Penny, Johnny the Greek? They connected. Like, what's the real story about Stripper Gate? Okay. So, the real story about Stripper Gate is that the rumor about Melissa was way before the show. Okay. I was very good friends with men, guys that were friends with Joe, who said that they used to go to Lookers. So um, I'm not the one who spread it. This rumor was, was going around for a long time. And when we were filming the show, before Melissa came on, there was talk about the fact that si Teresa's sister-in-law was once, once a dancer at Lookers. So when yeah. they came on and they acted the way they did 
and the Teresa in her situation came on. People were like, who do they think they are? She was a dancer and this and that. And then, then my part wasn't really much of anything except for having the fashion show. Everything was done all around me. The producers, the, you know, Teresa and I went to the salon. I had no clue Angelo was going to be there. When Angela was coming around the, the curtain and telling Teresa that Melissa, I, listen, her, her, she was, it was priceless. She looked like she was going to fall off the chair. And I'm like, wow. do tell, like, oh, is she good? Oh, she was very good. And the clients are sorry to see her go. I don't care. If it's the truth, it's the truth. Yeah. Then we go to Sun Cubana. And I knew that she was, that there was going to be a setup. I didn't know how they were going to do it. Honestly, I, I didn't, I was too busy doing my show. And Angelo was there. I knew I saw him. And I didn't know he was going to walk up the table. He walked up to the table. She recognized him right away. I believe that she texted Joe under the table and said, this is a problem. Because he was at least an hour away. While I'm filming oh. the show. Yes. So now the producers way into my show. I'm filming. We're drinking. They book me outside. They're like, we have to film outside. I'm like, why? They blocked the door so nobody could come out. Oh. I'm on cobblestone streets and five inch heels, six inch heels. And Joe's much smaller than me. And I'm leaning over and I'm hearing this filth come out of his mouth. Yeah. And I'm like, what is he talking about? Because remember, you have a couple drinks here. They whisk you outside. You have no idea. So um, when I realized he was talking about, I'm like, what? And he goes, you know, you're a this, you're a that. F you, get out of here. Me get out of here. This is my show. You get out of here. And then it went on and on. And I'm like, you get out of here. And I said, you know what, you little midget? I play with the big boys. And right. he, and he put his fist up. Oh. And Melissa did we, pulled did it Did we in. see that he put his fist up? No. Nope. Yeah, I didn't. He took it out. He took mm. it out. So that, yeah. So that is that. I'm very good friends with a girl that danced with Melissa. Her name is Nicole. I'm very good friends with her. So whatever, listen, she could say whatever she wants. I wasn't there. I didn't see it. But this is what was out there. And I was told that Angelo's whole life came crashing down afterwards. Oh, no. Um, yeah. His, his fiance broke up with him. Um, it was ugly. He's doing really well now, but I heard that he was, they, he was, they tried to pay him off to change his story. He did not do it. He wouldn't do it. Who tried to pay him off? Probably. I heard, I heard that the Gorgas tried to pay him off. I just Stop don't get it. it. I just don't get wow. this because it's not that big of a deal. It really no. is not that big of a deal. So just say the truth. Just like with everything else, just say your truth. Your five nose jobs, just say it. Yeah. Well, at that time, I believe because the parents were alive. And um, I just think that they didn't want it out there because of that, you know? And now you're involved in this lie. How do you go back on it? You know? I yeah. mean, it's hard. Yeah. I agree I with do. you. There's... It's a tough yeah. situation because you already went so far. You know, well, he could have just he could have just said, "Listen, that's none of your business. Believe what you want to believe." Yeah, believe what you want to believe. Yeah, whatever well, I, I did, do. I was good at it. You know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, but we know the Italian culture and the parents. Yes. And what are the parents yes. going to say? So I get that. I like yes. it, me too. It would, be, it would be the same thing. You know, it'd be the same thing. However, so I'm rewatching. I just finished season five because I'm rewatching. Okay. I'm putting myself through anxiety. And there's a scene where Penny, Melissa, and Joe are on a date night. Okay. They're on a date night. And guess who happens to be at the same mm -hmm. restaurant by herself? Mm -hmm. Yes. Penny. Penny's at the restaurant by herself. Right. To then, to then blame the cheating rumors and say it was all Teresa. How, how did that work? How does that work? Bravo calls Penny, come here. Like, how does that work? Yep. Yeah. They'll call Penny. They'll tell her to show up at the restaurant. The Gorgas knew she would be there. Um, wow. And then they got it together. But the cheating rumors, once again, the cheating rumors, way before the show. Mm. Way before the show. And her friend Jan didn't want to come on the show. She didn't want to. Oh. I'm the one. I'm the one who got her on because... At that point, 
you know, I, the truth, it was all about what was going on. This is what I was paid to do. I went to Jan's um, hairdressing place, her salon. She's like, I'm not, I want to do it. I don't want to do it. I go, what's the big deal? I go, you know, it'll do good for your salon. When she came on, she was slammed. Okay. And then I felt bad. It wasn't too thrilled with me. You know, I try to do everything I can to protect her, but you know, you know, the, the Melissa Gorga fans were all over her ass. So some believed some didn't, you know, even though Bulldog was coming out saying things, you know, people believe what they want to believe. Exactly. You're, you can't, you can't convince people otherwise. You just can't. And I don't want to, I don't want, like, I don't care. I brought it. This is what was said. And so everyone can make their own opinion. You're not, I'm not going to be a dead horse. I'm not going to keep saying, yes, she did. Yes, she did. No, it is what it is. Do you think, I don't know if it's production, but do you think people give Joe Gorka a pass for how he speaks to women? I can't even believe he gets away with it. In uh, this right. day and age, the way people are canceled, he has a filthy, filthy, disgusting mouth. He calls women the most disgusting, degrading things. I just, listen, I can't believe that that other women don't do something about it. Like, don't say, I can't watch this because of the way he speaks to me. No other show has done this. No other show. And his own sister, like he says it to his own sister. He says it to strangers, his friends, anybody. It's just, it's it's wild to watch back or to watch as we go. Cold what do you garbage. think about- Cold garbage the first day out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do you think about him attacking Jennifer at BravoCon? Like another woman, you know? Disgraceful. Right. Yeah. Disgraceful. Did, did you watch the footage? Yes. And it's disgraceful. Yeah. Like, yeah. shut up, be a man, and go in the corner and let the girls fight it out. Stop it already. Like, how yeah. dare you? The filthy, like, he can't wait to get in. He has zero respect for women. Zero. He has zero yeah. respect for women. We have, yeah, we agree. And we were, we're always wondering how, how, yeah. you know, especially in reunions, like he, Terrible. he, everyone justifies his behavior. And it's like, if it was anyone else, why are yeah. we justifying this? So, yeah, I agree. I, I agree. I, it's really, I can't believe that Teresa, I can't believe that she put up with this for that long. I really can't. I, I know. tried many times to, talk to her. I put them together after the big stripper gate, my friend Damien and I, uh, it was her birthday. And um, was it her birthday? It was one of their birthdays. I think it was Teresa and we got a limo and the Gorg is actually said, I'm not going unless Kim's there because they knew I would be a buffer. So I got her and Joe in the car and Joe and Melissa in the car. And we all went to STK. And we were having the time of our life. And I was on the dance floor dancing with Joe Gorga. And people were screaming like, oh, is that Kim D dancing with Joe? Like, oh, they couldn't believe it. Like, no uh. one could believe it. But, you know, I did that. And that, again, that's another reason why they saw what I can do and how I tried. But then after, like, they, the behavior was just continued. Yeah, You know, exactly. it just continued no matter what you can do. They're, it's ugly. It's ugly. Yeah. Yeah, we see. Do yeah. you think that production, especially with the situations that involved you, do you think production always spin it so that it was blamed on Teresa? Hmm. Yeah. You, one of the, well, yeah, one of the reunions, the second reunion when I was on, when I got paid for that season, I was paid for the reunion yeah. before. Okay. Then when I went the second season, uh, one of the producers says, Jacqueline's like, oh, aren't you going to bring Kim on? She goes, no. What? So she could just have Teresa back in life for Teresa? So they would, I lost the reunion the second season out because they didn't like that I had Teresa's back. They wanted me to turn on her. Wow. Why? Yeah. Why, do, why do they keep doing this to Teresa? I don't know. Do you think I it's because she's like not involved? Like she doesn't ask questions. She has like an actual personal life. When the, when the camera stops rolling, she's like actually living her life. I mean, I just feel like they take advantage of her. Just, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. And honestly, I, I never, I don't know why. I really yeah. don't know why, you know, she doesn't get a good edit. Like, even though people love her and she's the star of the show and, but she don't get a good edit. Like, how do you want to bring down your star? You know, I, right. I listen, they did it to Lisa I, Vanderpump. I 
Yeah. And then, and we talked to um, Leanne recently from Real Housewives of Dallas, and she said the same okay. thing. They would always come after her, and she said it was like the Nini effect. They always did it to Nini. I think it's just like yeah. the main person. They just yeah. try to because they know that's going to get the most camera time. So they, it's going to get the most reaction because they are the stars. They will bring it. And, and, so yeah, and Teresa is reactional. Yeah, like, Teresa. Yeah. You know, I can, I listen, you could have a conversation with Teresa two minutes before the scene, right? Teresa, don't let anybody get you. Just relax or whatever. And like, I won't, I won't. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. it's, it's so funny. She's yeah. like, no, you're not going to get to me. No one's gonna, and then their, her head pops off and you're like, oh my God. Yeah, it's really You funny. literally it, see it too in the show. I <laughs> do, you do. And I listen, I get a kick out of it. I think it's funny, you know, yeah. I do. Absolutely. That's hilarious. Why do you think production protects the Gorga so much? Like we don't ever see anything outside in their actual life besides Teresa. Well, I believe what Siggy said about the producers being out to dinner with them. Yeah. I know that the video that was 